Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction, the armor wizard, Zap Zap. We have a body armor demo today from Turtle Armoring Solutions. This is their SRT, or Special Rifle Threat Plate. Let's take a closer look at these guys in the table and see what we have in store for you today. In full transparency, Turtle Armoring Solutions sent over these samples for us to evaluate with no strings attached. This does include a workflow spreadsheet that he would like us to maintain too, and depending on how these shots progress, we can step up the game a little bit. But we have two different samples here, so he's trying to figure out which type will work for the best for him. Plate number four over here is 650 thousandths thick, or 16.51 millimeters. It weighs 4.475 pounds, and or 2.03 kilograms. This plate measured 10 by 13. Both of our SRT plates are multi-curve, meaning that we've got a curve right here and a curve right there. And depending on your body type, those will fit you a lot better than a single curve or no curve at all. Now, if this is the first time you're viewing my YouTube channel, we do all of our body armor demos completely different than everyone else on YouTube or after worst case scenario. These demos today will be a little on the different side because we have a workflow that he would like us to complete to see how well these will perform against certain threats. So we're gonna have a little bit of uh, variability there, but we have a shot list that we're gonna maintain, but we're after worst case scenario. Since this is rifle armor, we shoot at 45 feet and we also shoot at zero degrees, again, because that is worst case scenario. We use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma plastiline, a number one clay from Chavant. That's the same clay that the NIJ uses, but they have it in an oven all day long and they're only allowed to keep it out for an hour and they have to return it for three. They drop a giant like two and a half inch stainless steel ball on it. And if the dimple is like 19 millimeters, that is certified for back face. It's around 50 to 55 degrees outside today. So I can't keep that clay at temperature. I have been heating it up. So we're looking at a representation of what back face could be. If you see something like 60 to 70 millimeters in my clay and the NIJ's eyes, that would be failing. Since this plate employs a ceramic strike face normally per the NIJ, we would drop each plate on its face two times as a preconditioning test, but Turtle Armoring Solutions has asked that we not do that again to remove some of that variability from this test. Afterwards, we would mark a DT and a TQ on the plate to indicate that we've done the drop test and that if we hear any cracking from doing a torque test, but since we didn't do that, that. We don't have to mark that. From what we can tell, this particular plate for its given size, 10 by 13, both measured the same. I forgot to write it on this plate. We employ a full edged edge ceramic strike face. I think he may be using tile, so I have a little bit of foam here on the most outer edge, but there are a couple tiles that do poke through all the way out to the edge there. So it's a good thing because some companies will sell you a lighter plate because they will place a foam border around it or their tiles will have little cuts in and out where they don't have the ability to lay them all the way out to the edge to edge. So they sell you a lighter plate because you're getting less ceramic coverage. We use a chronograph whenever possible. We have a Proconal PAL Digital DOX as well as a Garmin Zero C1 and the new Athlon Optics Doppler Radar chronographs. We actually have three data sets and we're trying to compare the chronographs and see how they do. Typically with our light screen, it's very sensitive to where the sun is in the sky and it can actually throw the velocity off a little bit. So with those three data sets that we can compare and get a average of what our velocity is because we we need to know the velocity of that round. Some of the specifications that Turtle Armory Solutions would like us to shoot wants us to maintain a specific velocity and or higher, so that way we have that instant feedback to know that we're getting that velocity. And finally, we put a spreadsheet here at the beginning and the end, we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at it. In the end, we do a teardown so we can kind of look at the different materials that they are using to make up this plate. We can confirm if they are using an edge-to-edge -edge strike face or not, and then we send you on your merry way. I do wanna remind everyone that I'm not an NIJ lab, so if you see a threat stopped or penetrated here, you should always defer to the manufacturer to produce accredited, recent, and frequent lab results showing that those threats can be stopped. And on the flip side, if you're the manufacturer and you see me stop some kind of insane threat, such as M993, you should send that off to a lab and have that added as a special rifle threat to your panel. And I also want to remind everyone before we get into testing that because I'm not in a lab, I have a limited amount of plates that I can play with. So sometimes I have to place more shots on a plate than what the lab would do. A lot of the lab testing for NIJ is three shots or less, and they get a new plate. We don't have that luxury out here, so sometimes we have to place more shots on a plate. And just because I get a six or seventh penetration doesn't necessarily mean that that plate is bad. For the workflow on this medium SRT sample, we're gonna start off with our 16 inch M855A1 and 556 NATO. It's a 62 grain projectile with a copper core and a very large and hard, that's what she said, steel arrowhead penetrating tip. Every time I've measured them, they're right around 5960 on the C scale. I do believe the variation allows 49260, and they're always on the upper end. So we'll take one shot from the 16 inch. If it goes through, he wants us to put a soft backer behind it. 
3190 and I shot that way too high for some reason. Next up, we're gonna go up to our 308 shot because this is an SRT. I do believe he's designed this to work with an ICW if you want that 308 protection. So we've got our standard Lake City Winchester surplus M80 ball, 145, 150 grains. This particular round has a bimetal jacket, meaning that the jacket has a ferrous metal in it that attracts it, so basically steel. We'll take a shot from the 16 inch. We've added his 3A backer to the mix and we'll check the back face. And if it's under 40 millimeters, we'll step up to a longer barrel length. Twenty-six, twenty-five, 28.69, so we were 100 feet per second. Easy enough on this plate, it is kind of hanging off there. Our M855A1, the first shot was way down there. I'm not sure how that happened. Then our 20 inch shot was right there. The 22 was right there. That is not a fair hit. I gotta check my offset. Then we threw the 3A backer behind there. This is the 16 inch, which was under spec, and that was the 22, which was over spec. Place those bets in the comments below. No pass throughs from the 308. There is quite the dimple there. And then that A1 passed through up there because it was on the literal edge of the plate. So our back face on the 16 inch shot with that backer, only 19 millimeters. And then down here with the over spec shot, it's gonna be hard. Like I said, I need to get a better way of doing this. Right around 25, 26 millimeters. The 20 inch A1 shot that was stopped was 36. And then this one did not go through but it did push the clay up quite a bit, 47 millimeters. In the NIJ's eyes, that would have been a throwaway because of how close it was to the edge. We are starting to delaminate the strike face from the backer with those shots. So let's go see what's next on this particular design. We're closing out this workflow and we're stepping up to M855A1's big brother, M80A1. We have the 16 inch Right here, we'll take one shot center of mass with the backer to see if it stops this. If he's using silicon carbide tiles, there's a good likelihood that it'll eat this up. And it's mainly just trying to catch the rest of it with the material. 29, 25, 29, 22, and our guy took a tumble. We'll take two more shots at this plate to give it a little fair assessment of some multi-hit capability. We've got our 55 grain full metal jacket M193 here. We've got the 22 inch TC compass. So we should see over 3,400 feet per second with this. 3,422, 3,431. 3,422, 3,424. Our M80A1 was right there. That would be considered a fair hit in almost everyone's eyes. We're like four inches from that shot, uh, three inches from that shot, and then the M193, number one, or number one and number two. Place those bets in the comments below. Oh, right, we have a pass through from our M80A1. Now the question is whether it passed the 3A backer or not, and oh Lord, yes, it did. Not sure if this is a through and through aramid or if there's other advanced materials in there but likely the ability to slow that big penetrator down is not easy to do. The 193 was contained. There is a dimple there. I think at this point we've delaminated the strike face. So sample number four is done. Paging Dr. Matt to surgery, paging Dr. Matt to surgery. Now for a fail and flavor, the teardown. Let's forget to look at the guts of these plates. Turtle Armoring Solutions did ask that I not provide any internal measurements on material. And since he's the one who asked for this test, we will abide by those requests. Here is plate marked number four, which is the one we shot first. Again, the only pass-throughs were the M80A1 and then that unfair shot of M855A1. Again, unbranded polyethylene. This one, I think, delaminated a little worse than number five. Kind of looks like it is a different type, though. But otherwise, 
don't see any brand names on it and again we're using our silicon carbide tiles what's different about this design is there's just like a cottony like foam that's on the front hexagon silicon carbide tiles pretty much the same edge to edge layup on here and that's about all she wrote folks i would say this plate did very well for what he has it labeled as an srt plate it is lighter than a level three and if you have a three a backer to get to that you know five to five and a quarter pound mark you're able to contain 308 ball at the spec velocity and even above it without too much problems well everyone there is no doubt that our little hexagon tiles whether they're made out of boron carbide silicon carbide or Illumina can do a very good job at being multi-hit capable in some of our body armor panel designs. As long as we have good adhesion between our backer and this strike face, these can go a long way to take quite a bit of hits. This is more akin to, like I said, our HESCO M210, the RMA ESRT. It's not quite a level three, three plus on its own. It's more of an ICW. In a standalone configuration, we were able to stop our M193 and our M855A1. We added the backer to see what kind of back face that we would get from our 308. And again, deferring to actual lab results out here, the back face that I saw on my clay was more than controllable enough that it probably should pass NIJ. As far as stopping our M80A1, this design could not do it, mainly because that has a pretty long penetrator. And typically what I've seen in the past with 30 caliber threats, with any kind of steel core or steel penetrator you need ceramic at least about 275 to 300 thousandths thick depending on the type i don't have any pricing or availability for this armor from turtle armoring solutions this was all sent to me before his website is live so you have to defer to that once that stuff is launched with all that being said it's time for me to get the heck out of here but the end of all my videos i take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible there's a lot that goes into them number one is my family Amy's back there pushing the button on the camera and Deacon is back there waiting to shoot the shotgun. He would like to remind you all to like, subscribe, and share these videos to get that logarithm working for us and not against us. Number two are my Patreon YouTube channel members. I have a campsite in the description below. It's a landing page. I can't tell you what's in there because YouTube will get mad if I mention anything, but that is in for affiliates or discount tracking links in the Army Sales Commission. And what I do with that is I put it right back in the channel by buying some of this obscure armor-piercing ammunition or even M855A1. That's kind of a little bit on the spendy side, but I picked that up from War Pig Armory a lot because I go through quite a lot of it. Number three is Turtle Armoring Solutions. A big thank you to him for sending these armor out for us to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number four is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.